I hear a lot of problems from artists who are unhappy with the photographs they're using as references. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about my process of gathering references and this is an, an extremely important part of my process as well. So come out with me as I go and look for some photos. Well, I'm about to head out on an early morning photo gathering exercise, which also doubles as dog walking time. Now, one of the frequent problems I hear from artists is that the photos they get are really bad for doing things like no tan studies or getting good compositions. I think a lot of problems arise because number one, artists are using stock photos. Stock photos are a totally different creature to just going outdoors and taking real life photographs. Well, for the most part, stock photos have been heavily manipulated through things like Photoshop and filters and all sorts of stuff. And that makes the photograph pretty unrealistic. The sky is usually very dark or it's been gradated to such an extent that it throws the whole value relationship out and the, the sky actually becomes almost a dark middle value. Many other factors as well with photographs don't translate well into a painting. For example, vast panoramas may look fantastic on a photograph with everything in HD and boosted color and all sorts of things like that. But when you're looking at it as an artist who needs to paint this, the, actually the reference is useless. And at the very most, you may get some idea of a composition. But as far as a natural lighting situation is concerned, that is lost completely. In fact, you probably couldn't tell the time of day that that photograph was taken. So best tip is, first of all, take the photos yourself of scenes that you are familiar with. You will get much more out of a scene that you know if you look at the scene like an artist. It may be something you see every day of your life and you bored with it. But if you look at it from the point of view of an artist looking for mass shapes and lights and darks, warm and cool, shadow patterns, things like that, you can paint them and make them look like something special. Then of course the idea of taking a photograph and painting everything that's in it, that is almost something we do instinctively as beginners. Um, we believe that everything in the four sides of the photograph is sacrosanct and it must be painted as it appears. Whereas that couldn't be further from the truth. You've got to discern what to paint and what to leave out. And actually we have to leave out so much. Uh, it's impossible to paint everything that's in there unless you want to copy a photograph. And I don't believe that is my job as an artist to copy a photograph. My job as an artist is to try and interpret a scene through my own eyes and emotions and the way I use the brush and the color. So the photo is a guide, but I want a good one. And also I prefer to crop in to a very simple composition rather than a vast get everything in type of composition. The time of day, I go out early in the morning, really just after sunrise. If I go out again in the day, it's going to be in the evening because time of day is important. Just like a photographer prefers um, slanting light to show off the form of shapes, so too as a painter, I want to get early morning light or late afternoon light. The light is warmer, it's more directional, it doesn't wash out the scene. Uh, it's pointless going in midday or when the sun is high, um, all the color and form is washed out. 
and uh, it makes a big difference. Just a final word on cameras. There's no need to have a fancy camera. You don't need one. You can use your cell phone in most cases. A smartphone photograph is just fine. Um, if you're curious about what I use, um, I use a compact camera. Um, at the moment I'm using a Canon G7X Mark III, which has the zoom capacity quite easy to hold in one hand and I can zoom in and get cropped photos as well. So that is really the main reason I use it and plus it fits in my pocket. Any compact camera that allows you to zoom in with some fairly good accuracy is going to be just fine. It's more important to spend time looking with your own eyes and finding something that fits the sort of criteria I've been talking about and then just get the photo and you can look at it again and crop in some more if you need to back at your studio. Right, let's go have a look and see what we can find. Well, obviously, we don't have any snow, we don't have any ice, and there's no hurricanes and typhoons, earthquakes, and sub-zero temperatures, there's no sleet, very little rain, but it is jolly breezy. And what we do have is some amazing special effects. Have a look at this. Take the opportunity to observe your photos for the shapes of the waves and get those formations of light and dark and warm and cool. Now this doesn't really help us at all. There's no light, but this is better shadow patterns and close-up details. Notice how photos flatten space, so try and look for something to lead the eye to the focal area. You need some space. Light and shadow, look out for that. And a different view gives a different painting. Look at the lovely rich color in those waves. And look for interesting subjects like this queue for essential goods. Well, it's always fun to go out and explore and get a few ideas for something back at the studio. And I hope this has given you a bit of insight into getting better photo references from your own experiences. And you'll see a much easier interpretation of the subject back at the studio. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. And if you're interested in getting some more, look at the membership below and it might have something that you're interested in as well. Until next time, cheers for now.